It's the most basic of ecological principles. What happens upstream in a watershed affects things downstream. In southern Ohio, coal mining has supplied the state with electricity for years and years. But the after effects of the mining practices of the 50s are still with us today in the form of acid mine drainage from those old mine shafts. This whole drainage and a lot of the Raccoon Creek watersheds severely impacted by what's called acid mine drainage or AMD. And through a cooperative effort in the watershed between the Ohio University, ILGARD, the Department of Natural Resources, Mineral Resources Division, and the local watershed group and local partnerships through interested landowners, there's a comprehensive effort to improve water quality in this drainage. Any grass pipe? Nope. No. As a fisheries biologist, Mike Greenley is interested in what kind of aquatic life has survived the mine pollution. When the stream was first checked in 2000, nothing had survived. And last year was the first year of the evaluation <clears throat> compared to 2000 where we had zero fish collected and 2004 we collected eight species. They say you should never mix water and electricity. But that's exactly what these fisheries biologists are doing. It's called electroshocking, and it's an effective tool for the fisheries biologist. Taking a stream one section at a time, a net surrounded by a wire that emits a gentle electrical current temporarily stuns the fish, making collection easy. The biologist then sorts the fish by species and takes inventory. To evaluate the effects of treating Hewlett Fork with an alkaline substance uh, that is metered into the stream from a doser. This alkaline substance is calcium oxide. It's metered into the stream to help neutralize acid that is draining from abandoned mine land sites, uh, namely one large discharge just upstream of Carbondale. A large underground mine collects water, which eventually overflows into the watershed. This water is normally highly acidic, and filled with suspended metals, making it unsuitable for aquatic life. The options are limited in this case. Remove the mine or treat the water. We normally prefer to reclaim abandoned coal mines, that is, go right to the source and eliminate the problem. But with these large underground mines, there's no economic way to attack the problem directly. So we often end up treating the discharge from the mines in lieu of reclaiming them. Well, we're at the site of an abandoned underground mine. Uh, entry where the men went in and out and coal was removed. It's collapsed so we've inserted this 10 inch PVC pipe into the mine to capture the water that we need for treatment. The water is low in oxygen and the pH is very low uh, or it's very acid uh, water and in those conditions all the minerals such as iron and aluminum stay in suspension and can't be seen. It's only when the pH is increased by the dosing machine that we'll see the metals fall out of suspension. This is the dosing machine. Surprisingly low tech, it's driven by water current, like an old grain mill. A water wheel turns an auger, which feeds out lime into the stream. The lime changes the chemical balance of the water from acidic to alkaline. We're in the exit channel from the doser, and if you look carefully, you can see the pebble quicklime rolling down the channel and beginning to do its work. This dosing apparatus is treating about nine miles of Hewitt Fork, a principal tributary of Raccoon Creek, and improving water quality in Raccoon Creek itself. A long concrete spillway allows the metal deposits to eventually settle out of the water. It's the oxidation of these deposits that creates the acidity of the water in the first place. The main goal of this evaluation is to determine how well this dosing plant will improve the water quality in this stream. And we're using the fish population as an indicator of stream health. Obviously, the more species we find in Hewlett Fork after the dosing, that's an indication of uh, success, that the water quality is improving. If we don't see that much of a change, maybe it's not having as much of an effect uh, on the water quality. So that's what we're here evaluating using the biological community and we're specifically looking at the fish population. The canary in the coal mine analogy isn't lost on this example of water quality improvement on Raccoon Creek. 
the fish are back. And that means the bugs and plant life to support them are back as well. In 2000, I think approximately two years before the doser went online, there were no fish recorded at this site. So it was essentially a dead site, just looking at the fish community. Uh, our data last year, a couple years after the doser went online, uh, indicated eight different species. It's new life for an old watershed, but it is a work in progress. To follow the story, check out raccoonCreek.org.